All right. I have that time. And what I want you to do as we begin tonight's lesson, I want you to take your Bible in hand. Take your Bible in hand and just kind of hold it up like this a little bit. And I want you to repeat after me, this is the heart of God. This is a love letter from God to me. Everybody agree with that? All right, this is God's holy word. And the last one is this, this is the truth. And we have proclaimed all that tonight, and I, and I, I begin this lesson this way because in our, in our country today, in our world today, there are so many people that are denying the truths that are found in God's Word. I recall just a couple of weeks ago, as, I was, as Brother Mike had asked me to speak tonight, I was thinking about what to speak on, and I was listening, actually I was on uh, social media and I was looking at some of the pictures of my new grandbabies, uh, the twins, and just below there was a video that popped up and it was, uh, the headline said, don't push the Bible on me. And uh, this lady began, and I, I clicked on it, and this lady was just really violent and very irate toward Christians and toward uh, the Word of God. And one of the statements that was made was, don't push this on me. Don't give me your scriptures because I don't believe in it. Those scriptures are false. But I want to tell you tonight as I speak on why I believe the Bible is true, I believe we need to, as, as Christians in this day, and I believe we're in the last days uh, as we are journeying through our life, I believe that we need to stand upon the truths of God's Word more today than we ever have before. And I think tomorrow we're going to need to stand on it even more than we have today. The next day and on and on and on. We need to stand firm and we need to proclaim the truths of God's Word. Now I want you to, to remember this verse. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now when we look at that particular verse, we understand that that is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word. And then verse 14 says, and the Word, Jesus Christ, became flesh and He dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father. So when we think about the truth of God's Word, we're also thinking about who Jesus is and the fact that He is truth. And the Bible says in John 8 that the truth will set you free. And I'm telling you, there is a plethora of people in our world today that need to hear the truth so that the truth can set them free. Now, when you were lost, you needed to be set free, right? Right? How were you set free? You were set free from the, the knowledge that you heard of the Word of God and from the Spirit of God as He convicted you, and He set you free. Now, as you probably have heard this before, the Bible is the, most, the best-selling book of all time. But I began to look into that, and I also saw this stat that said it is the least read book of all time. Now, think about that. More Bibles are probably laying around in the house than any other book, and they're never picked up. The dust is on them, and people are just not reading it. Well, I believe we need to read the Word of God for its truth that it contains. I heard this quote, and I love it. It said, if you see a Bible that is falling apart, it probably belongs to someone who isn't. You have one of those? I had a grandmother that had a Bible like that. That was, that was one of the most special books that I have ever, ever seen, as she used it day after day after day after day, and it was falling apart, but she wasn't. So the Word of God can do amazing things in our life. Now I want us to begin tonight with Isaiah chapter 40, or I should say continue on, with Isaiah chapter 40. And uh, we're going to look at verse number 8 as we spring forth into this subject tonight, why I believe the Bible to be true. The prophet Isaiah speaks to us in verse number 8. He says, The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God, I love that, that's personal. The, love, the word of our God 
stands forever. Now, as we begin to think about that, let's ask ourselves this question. What if the Bible was a lie? You ever thought about that? What if the Bible was a lie? And I came up with some things that, uh, well, let me just do it like this. If the Bible is a lie, we would know nothing of the one and only true God. If the Bible was a lie, we would have no assurance because everything stands or falls on whether the Bible is true or not. If the Bible was a lie, there would be no revelation of God so that you can know God and the forgiveness of sin. If the Bible is a lie, we would know nothing of life beyond the grave. We would have absolutely no answer to the depravity of the human heart. We would have no answer to the origin of mankind. We would have no message of hope in the lonely hours of sorrow. We would have no message of life in the deep valley of death. And here's one, if the Bible were a lie, and this is where I believe our world is today, there would be no moral code, there would be no guide to human relationships, and there would be no sense of right and wrong. But I've got news for you folks. God's Word is not a lie. And I'm going to give you four reasons why I believe the Bible to be true. And I know there, there are many, many others that we could come up with and we could, we could talk about tonight. But I want us to, to look at these four things. And um, the first one is this. It's endurance throughout the centuries. It's endurance through the centuries. Now, again, in Isaiah 40, verse 8, he said, the grass withers, the flower fades. Now, we see that... Uh, you know, in the beginning of seasons and the ending of seasons. We know that that is, is absolutely true. We watch it on a yearly basis, how the grass will die, but then again in May and June, it'll come back alive again, and you got to start mowing, right? And the flowers, they fade away, but then you come back the next spring, and the flowers are blooming again. Now, folks, that's a true thing. That's absolutely true. It, it comes true. Well, the, the last phrase says, but the word of our God stands forever. That means forever in the past and forever in the future. So the Word of God, the truth of His Word, uh, the very heart of God, the love letter that He has written to us, is all about truth. And it has endured throughout the centuries. Turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'll get to it in just a second. 1 Peter chapter 1, looking at verse 22. Peter writes, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through what? Through the Word of God, which lives and abides, how long? Forever. Because all the flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. So it has endured throughout all centuries. Psalm 119, that great, uh, that great chapter in the book of Psalm, the longest chapter in the book of the Bible. In verse 89 it says this, Forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And so uh, we find in verse 160 of that same chapter, thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Do you see that common word throughout uh, Peter and throughout the psalm, the word endure? So the word of God has endured uh, much throughout all of the centuries. Now I want you to know something. This was not some Christian or some preacher, but it was God that is saying that His book endures forever. Notice this. The Word of God has stood against all the assaults of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Well, we know that the enemy is Satan himself, the great deceiver. Uh, he even knew how to quote Scripture. He just didn't quote it all right. But he knew he knows what Scripture is. 
And he places his assault upon the Word of God because he knows how true the Word of God is and he doesn't want people to know the truth. But the Word of God has withstood all of his assaults. It has stood against the vain philosophies of men. You have men that come up with their own ideas. They come up with their own plans. They come up with their own strategies. They come up with their own laws. But they do not stand the test against the Word of God. But the Word of God has stood against all those vain philosophies. The Word of God has stood against all the unbelief and the infidelity of modernism and humanism that we see throughout our world today. And it has also stood against the satanical hatred of lost people. The lady that I mentioned to you on the, about the, uh, speaking on that video, she's lost. She needs Christ. That broke my heart. And the very thing that she needs the most is the thing that she was rejecting the most. And that is the truth of God's Word. Folks, I pray that somebody can get through to her. And there are scores of people just like her that, are, that hate the Word of God. So the Word of God has stood like the mighty rock it is. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, upon this rock I'll build my church? That's a true statement, folks. He built the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against His church. It's mighty, it, it is the mighty foundation of our faith. You read throughout the book of Hebrews, and especially Hebrews chapter 11, and those folks who, who are in the hall of faith that I call it, they stand upon the Word of God, and they stood upon the Word of God throughout their life. This Bible, the Word of God has been burned in huge bonfires. Even in uh, uh, third world countries today, and some of the communistic countries today, they still are burning Bibles. They don't want people to read the Word of God. It has been uh, sunk by the boatloads in the deepest parts of the ocean. But I want to tell you, the Word of God still stands. The Word of God continues to prevail. It's been cut by the knife of modernism and even today by liberalism, trying to denounce and trying to deny the very truths of the Bible which you hold in your hand. Now Jesus spoke of this as He said this in Matthew 24, 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. <laughs> it's another true statement, by the way. But my words shall never pass away. Now I don't know if you can get any more plainer than that. The Word of God's going to stand and the Word of God has stood throughout all centuries. And get this, the Word of God will continue to stand throughout all centuries. It's endured throughout the centuries. But secondly, it's been endorsed by the Son of God. Jesus Christ endorsed the Word of God. Now if you question whether or not the Bible is true, you also question whether you can depend on Jesus telling the truth. Now you can go through, and, and, and I've made a study of this uh, throughout my 42 years of ministry, and I have found that Jesus quotes a lot of Old Testament Scripture, Brother Mike. You've seen that. You point that out in your messages and sermons. And, you know, Jesus knew what was in the Old Testament. I tell you what, He put His hand on the book of Genesis. I'm telling you. You realize He spoke a lot about Lot? That'll go, that went right over your head, didn't it? He spoke a lot about Lot. But He spoke about the demise of Sodom and Gomorrah, did He not? He talked about Noah and the ark. He said, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He spoke about Joseph. He talked about marriage. You go back to the book of Genesis. He quoted uh, there out of Genesis chapter 2. So Jesus put his hand on the book of Genesis. But it's not just the book of Genesis. You can find Jesus Christ on every page of the Word of God as it is proclaimed throughout uh, His Word. Now, you know, Jesus even knew a lot of people wouldn't believe, wouldn't believe the Old Testament about Jonah. And Brother Mike, the last four sermons on that have been spectacular and just been great. I hope you were here to hear all those. But you know, uh, <laughs> it's funny. A big fish swallows a man, and he stays alive in there for three days and three nights. And then on God's command... 
the big fish spews him out. It's a plane. It's a bird. No, it's a renegade preacher. You know, he's heading off to Nineveh. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, and I don't have this one on the board, but he, was, he spoke about Jonah in that verse as he was speaking about his death. That he was going to be in the heart of the earth for three days. Folks, he endorsed the Word of God. Now, somebody said, well, how could he endorse the Word of God? He was here and the New Testament hadn't even been written yet. Well, that's true. So how could he have endorsed it? Well, you have to go back and you have to go in and you, you have to look at some Scripture and see how he did that. And I, I, I invite you to turn to John 14. John 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, whose name? The name of Jesus, right? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And you remember John 1.1 1, 1 said He was the Word, right? So don't you think Jesus already knew what the New Testament was going to be about? Don't you think He knew the, uh, the writers and how the Holy Spirit was going to breathe on them and was going to inspire them to write the Word of God? I guarantee you He knew that. Why? Because He's the heart of God. He is God. And so He knew this, so He could endorse this. He reached out uh, and He put His hand upon the New Testament. Even though it was unwritten, He still endorsed it. <laughs> the Bible being on trial, and it's on trial a lot in our world today by a lot of people, but I want them to know that the key witness is the most widely known person that had ever lived on this wor in this world. And his name was Jesus. And folks, Jesus has never been proven wrong. Think about that. If people in it would, would read the Scripture, they could tell right now what's going on. That we're living in the last days and that Jesus is going to be proven right. So we bring Jesus to the court, the very Son of God, and we ask Him this question. Jesus, is this Bible true? Is it the Word of God? And i tell you what He would do. He would take this and He would, by His nail-scarred hands, He would hold it. And He will show you how the Old Testament relates to the New Testament and how the New Testament relates to the Old Testament. Because, folks, it's all about Him. It's all about Jesus. And so if we're going to say the Word of God is true, we need to be saying Jesus is true. Look with me in uh, Luke chapter uh, 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 and 45. Then He said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. So he's going back and he's making an overlook and an overview of the entire Old Testament. The prophets, uh, the poetry, the Psalms, uh, the law of Moses, all of these things he has in his mind. And here's what he says, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scripture. Now that sounds to me like he's endorsing the Word of God. John 16 again, back in John chapter 16, I want to look at verse 13 and 14. It says this, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it unto you. So Jesus Christ endorsed the Word of God. Number three, it's enabling in the lives of men. Let me give you something I hope will stay with you uh, at least for the next ten minutes, okay? 
The Bible does what no other book can do. Did you get that? The Bible does what no other book can do. Now, folks, you bring me the works and the writings of uh, Muhammad. Go ahead and bring me the works and the writings of Buddha. You go ahead and bring me the works and the writings of Confucius or any other religion in the world. And by the way, uh, it was, I, I just saw where there's over 4,200 different religions in this world. Bring them all. And I'll put the Word of God up against any of them. Wouldn't you? Don't you believe in it that much that you would say, hey, listen, you can say whatever you want to say, but if it doesn't say what this book says, I don't want any part of it. And folks, I'm going to tell you, those works will not stand up to the Word of God. Here's what the, the book can enable people to do. Number one, the, this book can enable people to be saved. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad that it talks about salvation? Aren't you glad it talks about how you can, can reach, uh, reach the throne room of God? It's through His Word. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. So you're listening to the truth of God's Word, and the Holy Spirit comes along, and He begins to convict you of what you have heard, and all of a sudden, you realize you're a sinner. Then you realize you must confess that sin because you can't do it on your own. You can't get to heaven on your own. And you read about the fact that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Holy Spirit takes that to another level and He says, that's how you get to heaven. And so, what does He do? The Word of God enables you to be saved. As He works in tandem with the Holy Spirit. This book can lead men out of darkness into light. This book can lead people out of sin into grace. This book can give men peace in their hearts. If you've got peace in your heart, the Word of God has given it to you. Because you stand upon it, you believe it, you hear it, and you live it. But not only does this book enable people to be saved, this book enables people to be sure. Don't you love to have confidence? This book can give you confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it tells us in John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my words and believes on him that sent me, what has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment or condemnation, but is passed from death into life. Don't you like that surety? That confidence that you can have, knowing that when you are saved, as Mike says, and I quote, truly saved, then you are secure forever and ever. What about uh, a person that needs direction in life? Well, I'm going to tell you, this book can enable you uh, to, to show you how, who you are to seek as far as direction in your life. And it tells us in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom. Now, folks, we all... We're all going in on our, on our life journey and we're going this direction, that direction. I'm going to tell you, we need wisdom. Do we not? In every decision we make in life, we need the wisdom of God. But I want to tell you, this Bible also does something else that's powerful. It enables people to trust in God. It enables you to trust God. And in John chapter 6, and I don't know if we'll read, read all of this, or excuse me, Mark chapter 5. I'm getting ahead of myself. Mark chapter 5, verse 30. We find that there is a, a lady that has an issue of blood. She's had this for some 12 years, and she has spent all of her money on doctors, and she has just come to her wit's end, and she just doesn't know what to do. But she reaches out, and what does she do? She touches the hem of His garment. And it says this, And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? <laughs> but his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. I love that about that lady. 
she comes to worship him and just she spills her heart out to him. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. But 35 and 36 are interesting. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. By the way, that was Jairus who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Remember, he had come to Jesus and said, you know, my daughter's uh, dying. Can you come? And verse 36 says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, do not be afraid. Just trust in me. Only believe. Aren't you glad that we have a God that we can trust? So the Word of God has endured through the centuries. The Word of God has been endorsed by Jesus Christ Himself. And the Word of God enables you to uh, be saved and to be sure. It enables you to seek direction in life. It enables you to trust in God. But I want to finish with one thing, and that is this, number four. The Word of God, I believe, is true because it has enormous wealth of truth. Look at John 17. Look, John 17, verse 13, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in, in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. And then this, sanctify them by your truth. Where do we find that truth? The Word of God has an enormous wealth of truth. And it says this, Your Word is truth. Listen to me as I close. Those who love it, the Word of God, never get tired of it. You don't get tired of it if you really love the Word of God. Those who read it find something new in it every day. His mercies are new every morning, right? Right? How many of you meditate on it day and night? Hey, you're going to find something new as the Spirit of God illuminates your mind. And I've done it many, many times where I look at a Scripture and get nothing at that particular time, and I'll come back a week or two later, and the Spirit of God says, hey, this is what I want to give you today. Well, that's, that's what I call truth nuggets right there. He just, he's constantly doing that. So the Bible has a wealth of truth. I love the song, and I sang it not too long ago, and it says, Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Why do I believe in the Bible? Because it's true.